a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Armalite AR-15 The Armalite AR-15 was a select fire, air-cooled, gas-operated, magazine-fed assault rifle manufactured in the United States between 1959 and 1964. Designed by American gun manufacturer Armalite in 1956, it was based on its AR-10 rifle. The Armalite AR-15 was designed to be a lightweight assault rifle and to fire a new high-velocity, lightweight, small-caliber cartridge to allow the infantryman to carry more ammunition. In 1959, Armalite sold its rights to the AR-10 and AR-15 to Colt due to financial difficulties. After modifications, Colt rebranded it the Colt Armalite AR-15. Colt marketed the redesigned rifle to various military services around the world, and it was subsequently adopted by the U.S. military as the M16 rifle, which went into production in March 1964. Colt continued to use the AR-15 trademark for its line of semi-automatic-only rifles marketed to civilian and law enforcement customers, known as Colt AR-15. The Armalite AR-15 is the parent of a variety of Colt AR-15 and M16 rifle variants. History After World War II, the United States military started looking for a single automatic rifle to replace the M1 Garand, M1-M2 carbines, M1918 Browning automatic rifle, M3, grease gun, and Thompson submachine gun. However, early experiments with select fire versions of the M1 Garand proved disappointing. During the Korean War, the Select Fire M2 carbine largely replaced the submachine gun in U.S. service and became the most widely used carbine variant. However, combat experience suggested that the Dot 30 carbine round was underpowered. American weapons designers concluded that an intermediate round was necessary, and recommended a small caliber, high velocity cartridge. However, senior American commanders having faced fanatical enemies and experienced major logistical problems during World War II and the Korean War, insisted that a single powerful .30 caliber cartridge be developed, that could not only be used by the new automatic rifle, but by the new general purpose machine gun in concurrent development. This culminated in the development of the 7.62x51mm NATO cartridge. The United States Army then began testing several rifles to replace the obsolete M1 Garand, Springfield Armory's T-44E4, and heavier T-44E5 were essentially updated versions of the Garand chambered for the new 7.62mm round, while Fabrique Nationale submitted their FN4 as the T-48. Armalite entered the competition late, hurriedly submitting several AR-10 prototype rifles in the fall of 1956 to the United States Army's Springfield Armory for testing. The AR-10 featured an innovative straight-line barrel-slash-stock design, forged aluminum alloy receivers and with phenolic composite stocks. It had rugged elevated sights, an oversized aluminum flash suppressor and recoil compensator, and an adjustable gas system. The final prototype, featured an upper and lower receiver with the now familiar hinge and takedown pins. And the charging handle was on top of the receiver placed inside of the carry handle. For a 7.62mm NATO rifle, the AR-10 was incredibly lightweight, at only 6.85 pounds empty. Initial comments by Springfield Armory test staff were favorable, and some testers commented that the AR-10 was the best lightweight automatic rifle ever tested by the Armory. In the end the United States Army chose the T-44 now called the M-14 rifle which was an improved M1 Garand with a 20-round magazine and automatic fire capability. The US also adopted the M-60 general purpose machine gun. Its NATO partners adopted the FN-4 and HKG-3 rifles, as well as the FN Mag and Rheinmetall MG-3 GPMGs. The first confrontations between the AK-47 and the M-14 came in the early part of the Vietnam War. Battlefield reports indicated that the M-14 was uncontrollable in full auto and that soldiers could not carry enough ammo to maintain fire superiority over the AK-47. And, while the M-2 carbine offered a high rate of fire, it was underpowered and ultimately outclassed by the AK-47. A replacement was needed, a medium between the traditional preference for high-powered rifles such as the M14 and the lightweight firepower of the M2 carbine. 
As a result, the Army was forced to reconsider a 1957 request by General Willard G. Wyman, commander of the U.S. Continental Army Command to develop a .223 caliber select fire rifle weighing 6 pounds when loaded with a 20-round magazine. The 5.56mm round had to penetrate a standard US M1 helmet at 500 yards and retain a velocity in excess of the speed of sound, while matching or exceeding the wounding ability of the .30 carbine cartridge. This request ultimately resulted in the development of a scaled-down version of the Armour Light AR-10, called Armour Light AR-15 rifle. In 1958, Armour Light submitted 10 AR-15 and 125-round magazines for Canark testing. The tests found that a 5-7 man team armed with R-15s has the same firepower as 11 man team armed with M14s. That soldiers armed with R-15s could carry three times more ammunition as those armed with M14s. And, that the AR-15 was three times more reliable than the M14 rifle. However, General Maxwell Taylor then Army Chief of Staff, vetoed the AR-15 in favor of the M-14. In 1959, Armour Light now frustrated, with the lack of results and suffering ongoing financial difficulties, sold its rights to the AR-10 and AR-15 to Colt. Colt Era After acquiring the AR-15, Colt promptly redesigned the rifle to facilitate mass production. Based on the final Armour Light design, most notably, the charging handle was relocated from under the carrying handle, like the earlier AR-10 to the rear of the receiver, like the later M16 rifle. Colt then renamed and rebranded the rifle, Colt Armalite AR-15 Model 01. After a Far East tour, Colt made its first sale of Colt Armalite AR-15 rifles to Malaya on September 30, 1959. Colt manufactured their first batch of 300 Colt Armalite AR-15 rifles in December 1959. Colt would go on to market the Colt Armalite AR-15 rifle to military services around the world. In July 1960, General Curtis LeMay, then Vice Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, was impressed by a demonstration of the AR-15 and ordered 8,500 rifles. In the meantime, the Army would continue testing the AR-15, finding that the intermediate cartridge dot 223 rifle is much easier to shoot than the standard 7.62 mm NATO M14 rifle. In 1961 marksmanship testing, the US Army found that 43% of AR-15 shooters achieved expert, while only 22% of M14 rifle shooters did so. Also, a lower recoil impulse allows for more controllable automatic weapons fire. In the summer of 1961, General LeMay was promoted to Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, and requested an additional 80,000 R-15s. However, General Maxwell D. Taylor, now Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, advised President John F. Kennedy that having two different calibers within the military system at the same time would be problematic and the request was rejected. In October 1961, William Goodall, a senior man at the Advanced Research Projects Agency, sent 10 R-15s to South Vietnam. The reception was enthusiastic, and in 1962, another 1,000 R-15s were sent. United States Army Special Forces personnel filed battlefield reports lavishly praising the AR-15 and the stopping power of the 5.56mm cartridge, and pressed for its adoption. The damage caused by the 5.56mm bullet was originally believed to be caused by tumbling due to the slow 1 in 14 and rifling twist rate. However, any pointed lead core bullet will tumble after penetration in flesh because the center of gravity is towards the rear of the bullet. The large wounds observed by soldiers in Vietnam were actually caused by bullet fragmentation, which was created by a combination of the bullet's velocity and construction. These wounds were so devastating, that the photographs remained classified into the 1980s. However, despite overwhelming evidence that the AR-15 could bring more firepower to bear than the M14, the Army opposed the adoption of the new rifle. U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara now had two conflicting views, the USAF's repeated requests for additional R-15s, and the ARPA report favoring the AR-15, versus the Army's position favoring the M-14. Even President Kennedy expressed concern, 
so McNamara ordered Secretary of the Army Cyrus Vance to test the M14, the AR-15 and the AK-47. The Army reported that only the M14 was suitable for service, but Vance wondered about the impartiality of those conducting the tests. He ordered the Army Inspector General to investigate the testing methods used. The Inspector General confirmed that the testers were biased towards the M14. In January 1963, Secretary McNamara received reports that M14 production was insufficient to meet the needs of the armed forces and ordered a halt to M14 production. At the time, the AR-15 was the only rifle that could fulfill a requirement of a universal infantry weapon for issue to all services. McNamara ordered its adoption, despite receiving reports of several deficiencies, most notably the lack of a chrome-plated chamber. After minor modifications, the new redesigned rifle was renamed the rifle caliber 5.56 mm M16. Meanwhile, the Army relented and recommended the adoption of the M16 for jungle warfare operations. However, the Army insisted on the inclusion of a forward assist to help push the bolt into battery in the event that a cartridge failed to seat into the chamber. The Air Force, Colt, and Eugene Stoner believed that the addition of a forward assist was an unjustified expense. As a result, the design was split into two variants the Air Force's M16 without the forward assist, and the XM16E1 with the forward assist, for the other service branches. In November 1963, McNamara approved the U.S. Army's order of 85,000 XM16E1S, and to appease General LeMay, the Air Force was granted an order for another 19,000 M16S. In March 1964, the M16 rifle went into production and the Army accepted delivery of the first batch of 2,129 rifles later that year, and an additional 57,240 rifles the following year. The Colt Armalite AR-15 was discontinued with the adoption of the M16 rifle. Most AR-15 rifles in U.S. service have long ago been upgraded to M16 configuration. The Colt Armalite AR-15 was also used by the United States Secret Service and other U.S. federal state, and local law enforcement agencies. Shortly after the United States military adopted the M16 rifle, Colt introduced its line semi-automatic-only Colt AR-15 rifles, which it markets to civilians and law enforcement. Colt continues to use the AR-15 name for these rifles in order to pay homage to their predecessor the Armalite AR-15. Armalite AR-15 the AR-15 is a select fire, 5.56x45mm, air-cooled, direct impingement gas-operated, magazine-fed rifle, with a rotating bolt, and straight-line recoil design. It was designed to be manufactured with the extensive use of aluminium and synthetic materials, by state-of-the-art compute numerical control automated machinery. The AR-15 is a modular weapon system. It is easy to assemble, modify, and repair using a few simple hand tools, and a flat surface to work on. The R-15's upper receiver incorporates the forestock, the charging handle, the gas operating system, the barrel, the bolt and bolt carrier assembly. The lower receiver incorporates the magazine well, the pistol grip, and the buttstock. The lower receiver also contains the trigger, disconnector, hammer and fire selector. The R-15's duckbill. Flash suppressor had three tines or prongs and was designed to preserve the shooter's night vision by disrupting the flash. Early R-15s had a 25-round magazine. Later model R-15s used a 20-round waffle-patterned magazine that was meant to be a lightweight, disposable item. As such, it is made of pressed-slash-stamped aluminum and was not designed to be durable. The R-15's most distinctive ergonomic feature is the carrying handle and rear sight assembly on top of the receiver. This is a by-product of the design, where the carry handle serves to protect the charging handle. The AR-15 rifle has a 500mm sight radius. The AR-15 uses an L-type flip aperture rear sight and it is adjustable with two settings, 0 to 300 meters and 300 to 400 meters. The front sight is a post adjustable for elevation. The rear sight can be adjusted for windage. The sights can be adjusted with the bullet tip, or pointed tool. 
The stoner system provides a very symmetric design that allows straight line movement of the operating components. This allows recoil forces to drive straight to the rear, instead of connecting or other mechanical parts driving the system. High pressure gas performs this function, reducing the weight of moving parts and the rifle as a whole. The R15 straight line recoil design, where the recoil spring is located in the stock directly behind the action, and serves the dual function of operating spring and recoil buffer. The stock being in line with the bore also reduces muzzle rise, especially during automatic fire, because recoil does not significantly shift the point of aim. Faster follow-up shots are possible and user fatigue is reduced. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?